We're so thankful. Would you remain standing so as we receive Bishop Michael Henderson, New Life Body of Christ. We're so honored that he would close us out. He's called the hurricane, and I know he's going to bring it in. Amen? Amen. And he's going to take us to the mountaintop. We've already, we're already at the top, right? <laughs> we're, he, he's just going to seal it. That's what I'm referring to. He is going to seal the word. Are we ready to receive the Honorable Bishop Michael Henderson? And it was their birthday. Was your birthday today? Today, Pastor Kathy Henderson. And yours was yesterday. Give him a great big hand. God bless you. Thank you so much. We're honored to have you. Come on, let's give God some glory in the house. Let's give him some glory in the house. Come on, let's give God some glory in the house. Y'all got to make some noise in the place. I can't see you, but I need to hear you. Hallelujah. 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 Father God, in the name of Jesus, for the hour has come once again to proclaim the gospel. And the gospel is good news. Lord, were these old lips of clay, speak to me and speak through me. And God, when it's all said and done, I'll be careful to give your name praise Give your name glory. Give your name honor. In Jesus' holy and righteous name we pray. All of God's people shout it. Amen. Amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Most High God. I do want to give honor to God, for he's the head of our life. We honor his son, Jesus, Savior of the world, Savior of our souls. We honor the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. For it is he that has promised that he would lead and guide us into all truth. We thank God for our lovely hosts. Amen. Bishop Kelsey and Pastor Lucilla Lewis. Let's give them some love. I know it took a lot to put on this uh, mother summit. Amen. And we thank God for them. Amen. And I want you to know I am living the dream. Amen. I've been in Hawaii about 28 years. Amen. And I'm living the dream. Amen. Thank God uh, that my wife agreed, amen, to spend her birthday here at the Mother Summit. Y'all say amen, because you know you saints, y'all take off on y'all birthday. You know, Pastor, I'm not going to be in church this Sunday because it's my birthday. Y'all can say amen. Amen. But y'all expect us to show up. Amen. But I thank God that when uh, Pastor Ducilla talked to her about it, amen, she automatically agreed. She said, I know it's our birthday weekends, amen, but we're going to go and support the Mother's Summit. And I was in agreement with her. Y'all say amen. And the reason why I'm saying I'm living a dream, how many can say that Michael and Regina whining and sing at their birthday celebration. Now I can say that. <laughs> say, what you do for your, well, Michael and Regina sang at my birthday celebration. <laughs> can you say amen? Amen. So I do want to honor my wife. Amen. She's been my wife for the last 42 years. Yeah, that's what we got in common. Yeah, both our name is Michael, and we both got two children. Amen. So we got a lot in common, so I'm happy. And I'm just going to recognize all the apostles, all the prophets, all the evangelists, all the pastors, all the teachers. So that should cover everybody. Y'all say amen. In the book of First Samuel. In the book of 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, the 11th through the 23rd verse, the New King James Version, you will find these words recorded. And Samuel said to Jesse, are all the young men here? Then he said, there remains yet the youngest, and there he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him, for we will not 
a sit down till he comes here. So he sent and brought him in. Now he was rugged with bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, arise, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servant said to him, Surely a distressing spirit from God is troubling you. Let our master now command your servants who are before you to seek out a man who is a skillful player on the harp. And it shall be that he will play it with his hands with, uh, when the distressing spirit from God is upon you, and you shall be well. Uh, so Saul said to his servants, provide me now a man who can play well and bring him to me. Then one of the servants answered and said, look, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethamite, who is skillful in playing, a mighty man of valor, a man of war, prudent in speech, and a handsome person, and the Lord is with him. Therefore Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, Send me your son David, who is with the sheep. And Jesse took a donkey loaded with bread, a skin of wine, and a young goat and sent them by his son David to Saul. So David came to Saul and stood before him, and he loved him greatly, and he became his armor bearer. Then Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Please let David stand before me, for he has found favor in my sight. And so it was, whenever the Spirit from God was upon Saul, that David would take a harp and play in with his hand, then Saul would become refreshed and well, and the distressing spirit would depart from him. Thus in the reading of the Scripture. And I want to use for a theme or a text this day, this hour, reconnecting and fighting for your purpose. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, I'm reconnecting and I'm fighting for my purpose. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I want you to know that God has a purpose and God has a plan for your life. Even before you were conceived, God had a plan for your life. The prophet Jeremiah was young and he thought that he did not have the authority or the words to be a prophet of God. But God said to Jeremiah, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Jeremiah was appointed to be God's prophet. Moses was appointed to be God's deliverer. And David was appointed to be king. Mary was appointed to be the mother of God. Jesus was appointed to be our savior. Peter was appointed to be the rock. And when Jesus would build the church, Paul was appointed to be an apostle. So look at somebody and say, you have a divine appointment. See, God has also created you with a purpose in life. There's a big picture, the theme for your life. Out of the theme will flow more specific or specific tasks and responsibilities. But make no mistakes about it. He created you with a plan and a purpose for your life. And you are in the fight for your life. Amen. I want you to know that the enemy not just going to let you walk down Blessed Boulevard. 
He just not going to let you walk down the street and receive the blessings that God had before you. But sometimes you're going to have to fight for your purpose. Sometimes you're going to have to fight for your blessing. Sometimes you're going to have to fight for your marriage. Sometimes you're going to have to fight for your family. You're going to have to fight for your children. You're going to have to fight for your ministry. You're going to have to fight for your anointing. Tell somebody I'm fighting for my life. Oh yes, we in a fight. But one thing about this fight, it's a fixed fight. We already know the results. In the end, we win. Don't give up, don't quit, don't throw in the towel, don't surrender, but stay in the fight. Just keep on fighting. In the end, you win. Y'all gonna help me preach. See, you, 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 you are fighting. It began before you were conceived. It began when God dreamed about you and God planned wonderful things for your life. And then it came a time for him to create you. And he skillfully and wonderfully created you so that you would be perfect for his plan. See, only you can do what God planned for you. I can't do what God planned for you. Only you can do what God planned for you. See, he crafted your mind and crafted your temperament. And he crafted what would make you tick. And it was all for the purpose of God. Amen. He created you with a purpose in mind. And soon as he created you and then the fight continues as you are born and enter a sinful world with a ruler who intends is to steal and to kill and to destroy. I want you to make no mistake, Satan is the prince of this world. And he hates God and he hates God's creation. And since he hates God's creation, he also hates God's creatures. And we are created in the very image of God. And as soon as you said that you were saved and sanctified and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, with mighty burning fire, and that you were going to run on and see what the end was going to be, Satan put a contract on your life. Well, look at somebody say, you ain't got to worry about Satan. Why? Because greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Amen. I'm operating under the authority and the anointing of God. I often tell people in order for Satan to even mess with you, he got to get God's permission. He can't just come up on you and do what he want to do, do what he pleased to do. He got to ask your daddy, can I mess with your children? And I tell all folks all the time, it's two things. If you want to get under my skin, mess with my wife or mess with my children. If you want to fight on your hand, mess with Mrs. Henderson, mess with Brandon, mess with Stephanie. You will find out that I'm a trained killer. Not only am I a trained killer, I taught people how to kill. Can I get a witness up in here? I served my country for 20 years, one month, and nine days. And I, put, I have not forgot how to whip up on you if you come up on me. I ain't going to start nothing, but I'll finish something. I ain't going to jump on you, but I know how to get you off of me. Or can I get a witness up in here? Don't get it twisted now. I might be saved and sanctified, but I still got some fight in me. And if you're a shepherd, you got to have some fight in you. If you're a shepherd, you got to fight for the sheep sometimes. you got to be willing to lay down your life for the sheep. I ain't no hide hollering. I'm a shepherd. I'm a under-shepherd. I'm a sub-shepherd. And I fight for my sheep. Can I get a witness up in here? Look at somebody say, I'd rather fight than switch. See, some of y'all don't know nothing about that commercial. But if you were born in my generation, they used to have a commercial for Camel cigarettes. And Camel cigarettes had no filter at all. It was just a piece of paper with tobacco roll. Can I get a witness here? But they had a commercial. The guy would come out there with a black eye and he said, I would rather fight than switch. In other words, he wasn't going to give up them cigarettes. He fight you for them cigarettes. And I got the same mentality when it comes to my ministry, when it comes to my salvation. I'd rather fight than switch. Do I got any fighters in the house? Do I got any fighters in the house? Anybody that's willing to roll up their sleeve 
and look the devil in the eye and tell Satan, you can't have my family. You can't have my wife. You can't have my children. You can't have my church. You can't have my community. You can't have my neighborhood. If you want to fight, show up on my ground. Doesn't matter, I'd rather fight than switch. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise up in here. I'm just getting started. But I feel this thing. I feel it down on the inside. I feel like Rick James. I feel like busted loose. <laughs> Do I got any fighters in the house? Say yeah! Shout yeah! See, we got to understand we got a purpose. Amen. And I found out that Satan wants to destroy your purpose. And Satan wants to destroy you and he wants to cut you down and make your life uh, utter immensely uh, miserable as possible. That's what he wants to do. That's what he wants to do. And the best way that Satan has found to destroy you is to keep you away from God. See, that's his plan. That's why when people are going through, Satan been using this trick for a long time. Why do you stay away from church when you're going through? Why do you stay away from the people of God when you're going through? Because the devil knows that one can chase a thousand, but two can chase ten thousand. So what do you do? He'll isolate you. He'll isolate you. He'll get you by himself so he can mess with your mind. And if he mess with your mind long enough, before you know it, he'll get in your heart. And before you know it, you're in a backslidden condition. Can I get a witness up in here? You see the saints coming, you go the other way. Amen. Because, because that's what Satan wants to. Because he knows if we can just get together, if we can come together, behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Because he know when we unify, there's power. How many of y'all know there's two are better than one? Come on, tell somebody two are better than one. Oh yeah, that's the Bible. That's the Bible. In Proverbs it says two are better than one. Amen. See, from my own life experiences and from studying the lives of others, I have found that people in life with the most inner peace, the inner commitment and contentment and stability are those who know what God has created them for. And they rise to that purpose in their life. You see, God didn't just plan for David to be king. He planned for David to transform a nation. See, some people thought he was just going to be king, but he was more than a king. He was a transformer. He was created to transform a whole nation. And some of y'all have been created to transform nations. Some of y'all been created to transform nations. Come on, touch yourself and say, I've been created to transform nations. Hey, Missy, we, 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 we don't want to just reach our family. That's important now. We understand that's our first ministry, but we want to reach others. We want to reach more. We want to reach nations. See, David was not created just because Israel needed a king, but David was created by God to transform and shape a nation. The fight for his purpose really started on the day that he gained the knowledge that his future was royalty. David was the youngest of eight brothers. His family thought of him as the runt. He was given the job of shepherding the sheep. But one day in David's youth, God showed him the purpose that he had and was created for. The prophet Samuel came to David's small town called Bethlehem. And Samuel listened to the instructions of God. And when he met David, God said, here is the future king, anoint him. And that brings me to point number one. When you get God's purpose, you get God's power. When you get God's purpose, you get God's power. Amen. How many of you know it's a package deal? And what I like about, what I like about God, amen, he'll anoint you in front of people that thought you wasn't nothing. He will anoint you in front of people that thought you would never amount to anything. So they thought David was a little runt. That's why they stuck him back there, amen, in the pasture to take care of the sheep. They thought he wasn't important, but they didn't know that God took him back there so he could prepare him for kingdom work. 
See, that's where some of y'all miss it. Y'all hear the call of God, but then you forget there's some preparation that need to take place. You know, you know, you know, when they gonna put me up? Amen. When is my time? Well, when you prepare, it'll be your time. Amen. You, you, you look at David when he got anointed. Amen. He got sent back to the pasture for some more preparation before he became king. Can I get a witness up in here? You know, then they get upset with you and then they want to go down the street to another church. Can I get a witness up in here? No, no, ain't nobody holding you back. We trying to protect you because you ain't ready. You ain't ready. We've been where you trying to go and we know that you're not ready. Can I get a witness up in here? First of all, you ain't never showed up to a prayer meeting so it can't be too much in you because you can't even show up for prayer. Can I get a witness up in here? Not only did prayer but you can't show up for church cleanup so somebody how you gonna preach to somebody and you don't even know how to keep the house of God clean can I get a witness up in here look at somebody say you got a purpose you got a purpose God got a purpose and along with his purpose you get some power do anybody got some power in the house so what David did what God did for David in front of his family David is anointed the future king somebody else said future king he has just learned what he was created for. He was created to rule, and he was created to be used by God and lead the nation of Israel. The day was a day of knowledge for David. So he got some knowledge now, but he still needed some training and some preparation. Can I get a witness here? Yeah, I know you went to Bible school. I know you went to Bible college. I know you went to seminary. I know you went to that theological college and you got a little sheepskin. But how many of you know the, the letter kill it, but it's the spirit that give life? There's a whole lot of people with knowledge, but no anointing. There's a lot of people that can talk good, but no anointing. <laughs> and I don't care how good you can talk. I don't care how good you can preach. If there's no anointing, there won't be no yokes to destroy. It's the anointing anointing that destroys the yoke. Do I got any anointed vessels in the house? You need to get anointed and then get your appointment. Get some anointing. Come on, look at the mouth. Say, get you some anointing and then get your appointment. See, we got it doing backwards. We appointing people with no anointing. And then we wonder why they don't last. They don't make it because they ain't got no anointing. Because see, the anointing will make you stay when everybody else leaves. The anointing will make you pray when nobody else pray. The anointing will make you study when ain't nobody else studying. The anointing will make you preach in season and out of season. The anointing will make you give when you ain't got nothing left to give. But you keep on giving because you've been anointed by God. You better make some noise in this place. Say yeah! Oh, my night vision kicking in. I can see you now. You can't hide on me now. My night vision is kicked in. Woo! Yeah, I can see you. You can run, but you can't hide, baby. Send this word to our trampoline, baby. So when they get to jumping tomorrow, the Holy Ghost will catch hold of them. Somebody ought to say, yes, Lord. Do I got any fighters in the house? Come on, tell three people I'm fighting for my life. Come on, tell three people I'm fighting for my life. I'm fighting for my life. Now, how fast somebody I say, I win. You see, from this point on, David could begin to dream the big dreams. Do we got any dreamers in the house? See, sometimes I don't sleep, I be dreaming. Can I get a witness here? Sometimes I just get up three o'clock in the morning, I start seeing stuff. Can I get a witness here? I start hearing stuff. Do I got any dreamers in the house? Sometimes I just walk around wide while I'm dreaming about what God can do. People say, what you doing? I ain't trying to get no exercise. I get enough exercise. I'm trying to get a vision. I'm trying to get a purpose. I'm trying to see what God want me to take this community. I'm trying to see what God want me to do. I'm trying to see who God want me to say something to. I'm trying to see if God want me to lay hands on somebody that they might get saved, that they might get delivered, that they might get saved set free. Somebody ought to say, I'm a dreamer. And see, one thing about a dreamer, you can't kill a dreamer. In fact, you can't kill a dreamer and you can't kill my dreams. Do I got any dreamers in the house? 
And I believe about this point, David was dreaming. And he could start envision, amen, how to lead an army. He could dream about the nation's economical advancement. And he could pray and hear from God on how to be a king. It's quite obvious to everyone that there is something special on David's life. As they returned from their battle, the women sang to him. They say Saul had killed his thousand and David his ten thousand. You see this favor began to stir up a certain amount of jealousy in King Saul. And this is why I tell spirit guard yourself from spiritual jealousy. Can I get a witness here? Sometimes the same ones that prayed with you, prayed for you, anointed you with oil, and say, I pray that God elevate you. I pray that God take you to another level. I pray that God take you to another dimension. I pray that your ministry grow. I pray that you will grow in grace, that you will grow in the favor of God, and then all of a sudden they hating on you. But I stop by to tell you later for your help. In fact, I tell my people, I'm just going to two-step on my haters. Do I got anybody that know how to two-step? Come on, tell somebody, I'm just going to two-step on my haters. Now give the Lord a clap offering if you will. I hear Apostle White say, come on, Bishop. So I better come on with it. <laughs> Somebody ought to say, yes, Lord. See, listen, listen. I found out it's not that you that they hate. It's your anointing that they hate. Hey, hey, man, they, they ain't got nothing really against you, Apostle. It's just the anointing that's on your life. It's just the gifts that you got that they mad with. They just jealous of your gifts, not jealous of you, but jealous of your anointing, jealous of your gifts, jealous of your talent. And that's what happened to Saul. He began to get jealous of David. Look at somebody say, jealousy will break you up, break you up. Jealousy will break you up. Can I, can I get a witness here? Don't nobody want to be married to no jealous woman. Don't nobody want to be married to no jealous man. Every time somebody speak to you, who is that? What you mean, who is that? It was a hundred plus people at the church the other night. I don't know who it is. I'm just speaking because they spoke to me. See, me and, my, me and my wife, we have an understanding and an agreement. If I don't introduce them to you, I have no idea who they are. And if she don't introduce them to me, that means she don't have no idea who they are. And we'll talk to them, apostle and evangelist, like we know them. And when they walk away or pass out a uh, uh, ear shot, we'll say, who was that? And most times we say, I have no idea. So why be jealous? Can I get a witness up in here? Somebody gonna holler at me tomorrow. Cause they're here tonight and they heard a word from God and they might holler at me tomorrow. And as dark as it is in here, I might not recognize you. And see some of you sisters, your hair that long today and this long tomorrow. Can I get a witness up in here? <laughs> Listen, I, I had a sister in my church. Every Sunday, she would change her hairstyle and her glasses. And if she didn't come in with the same man, I would have had no idea who she was. So I was happy that they didn't break up, that they stayed together, because that was the only way I knew who she was. Kind of get a witness up in here. Hey man, listen, don't get upset. Listen, people be talking about it, they ain't even speak to me. Why did you speak to them? Well, we didn't speak to each other, so what you mad about? You should have spoke to them, and maybe they would have spoke to you. If you show yourself friendly, God will give you a friend. Come on, clap your hands for Jesus. I'm all, I ain't gonna lie and tell you I'm almost through, because I'm not. <laughs> You, you know how we do it, Father. They say, I'm almost through. And people be, oh, they heard that. Now they, now, uh, no, so I'm not almost through. Can I get a witness? 
and, and thank God they ain't got the signs over there tonight. <laughs> you know, all the week they had the signs, five minutes. <laughs> they had the signs, time. <laughs> and some of y'all just kept on talking. <laughs> and some of y'all act like y'all ain't know they was over there. Y'all know they told you from the beginning they're going to be over there. Check them out. But you acting like you was in the spirit. You wasn't in the spirit because the spirit would have told you your time was up. Can I get a witness? Oh, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. No, you what? You was in the flesh. And listen, even if I am in the spirit, if Bishop Kelsey or Pastor Zucilla stand here, I'm through. And let the Lord deal with them. You're supposed to be subject to the prophet of the house. Subject to the angel of the house. If the angel say you through, you through. And the Holy Spirit will deal with them. You deep folk. You ain't that deep, you shallow. That's why you kept going. Tell somebody I come in peace. Come on, look at somebody say he come in peace. <laughs> they, they come in peace. But, but, but I'm at home, I'm at home, I'm at home. This is a family reunion. I'm at my family's house. I'm at my brother's and sister's house. Can I get a witness up in here? See, Saul had killed his thousand and David his ten thousand. And the favor began to stir up a certain amount of jealousy in King Saul. And as he watched David's progress in life, his jealousy gives away to hatred. That's why you got to guard yourself of jealousy because it'll turn into hatred. And Saul began to come up with schemes to kill David. Amen. He sends David into battle where King Saul is certain that David would die. He thought that if he could rid, uh, get rid of his competition without getting his hands dirty. But guess what happened? David didn't die. He thrived. He came back with double the results that was expected. And the people of Israel loved him all the more. That's why I say you can't kill a dreamer. You can't kill God's plan. You can't stop God's plan. You might slow it down, but you can't stop it. And the only way you can slow it down is if he allowed you to slow it down. Because if God wanted me to pick up momentum, he'll let me run right over you. He'll let me run right through you. And even though David was created by God to be king, anointed by God to be king, and even the people around him had uh, the inkling that someday he would be king, David never forced the issue. That's what you need to grasp. He never forced the issue. How many of you know that your, 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 your gift will make room for you? You ain't got to make room for your gift, but your gift will make room for you. It's too many people trying to make room for their gift when the Bible plainly tells us your gift will make room for you. So if you got a gift and God gave you the gift, guess what God going to do? He going to make room for your gift. He never set up a duel between him and King Saul. He did not try to stir up a revolution against the king. He did not attempt an assassination attempt. David, in fact, did the opposite of what many would expect him to do. He honored the king as God's servant, and David guarded the king's life with his own, becoming the leader of the royal bodyguard. And that brings me to point number two. God will never ask you to do evil to accomplish his purpose. See, when I was in Korea, we called them slicky boys. <laughs> Anybody ever been to Korea besides me? I know you've been, boo. Amen. Idi, I ship you over sale. Come inside. All right. Amen. See, if you, you know, we used to call them slicky boys because they were slick. Can I get it? Oh, yes. Ha, 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 ta, ta. Yes, sir. She's speaking in Korean tongues, not holy tongues. Can I get a witness here? Amen, but what I'm saying, we call them slicky boys, and it's sad that we got some slicky boys in the gospel. Slicky boys in the church. Amen, sneaking around. Amen, trying to cut cards and get schemes up against the pastor. You didn't appoint the pastor, you didn't call the pastor, and you can't remove the pastor. Only God can. 
So get your little group together. And you're going to end up just like Satan and a third of his angels. You're going to get kicked out the church. And then we're going to call our fellow colleagues and we're going to mark you. Because the Bible tells us to mark them that cause division. Listen, listen, listen. If you've been a part of 15 ministries, 15 ministries, and all 15 had a problem, the common denominator is you. Maybe it's not the ministry, maybe it's you. And then they, then they got a little script now. They got a little script. I'm, I'm, I'm outgrown that man. What you mean you outgrown that man? You ain't done nothing over there. You ain't outgrown nothing. Hey Amen. You just want your way. And that's why you truly leaving. Because if God told you to leave, he gonna let your shepherd know. And not only is he going to let your shepherd know, your shepherd probably going to recommend some places for you to go. And then I'm going to call the apostle, I'm going to call the pastor, I'm going to call the bishop and say, I got somebody that God told me to send your way. And these are their gifts and this is how they were being used in our ministry. God ain't just going to send you nowhere. Some people have been wondering for six months. Come on, come on. God told you to leave and you ain't found a home in six months. God told you to leave and you ain't found a home in a year. God told you to leave and you just wandering for five years, ten years, talking about I'm just going from church to church. You a wanderer. In fact, what you are, you a sermon taster. You know, you know, well, I don't like that restaurant, so I'm not going back over there. That might be the one you need to stay at till you get delivered. Can I get a witness here? Because guess what? You're going to be all right for three months. And then after that pastor say something that you don't like there, oh, God told me to leave there too. No, he didn't. You lying wonder. Get behind me, Satan. The truth ain't in you. Come on, tell somebody I'm fighting. I'm fighting. I'm fighting. I'm reconnecting and fighting for your purpose. Do I got any fighters in the house? Amen. David, David, in fact, did the opposite. Amen. Look at somebody say he did the opposite. He did the opposite. Amen. Look at somebody and say, he did the opposite. Amen. So we, we understand, we understand. Even from his own son, yet in spite of all these trials, David remained faithful to God and continued to serve him with all his heart. And when David learned of Saul's evil intent against him, he ran for his life. He runs with a small band of men to a town called Nob to a priest named Amalish. And when King Saul learned that Amalish had helped David, he brings his army to Nob and he questions the priest. He said, why have you ganged up against me with the son of Jesse, giving him bread and a sword, even praying with him for God's guidance, setting him up as an outlaw out to get me. But I like how Amalish uh, answered the king. He said, there's not an official in your administration as true to you as David. Your own son-in-law and captain of your bodyguard, none more honorable either. Amen. He stuck up for David. So Saul, in a rage of anger, ordered the priests and 70 others along with their families to be put to death. And the whole town is numbered or murdered because of King Saul's jealousy and hate. And David escapes. So, look, see, when you've been called by God, God will protect you. Amen. God will tell you what to do. God will tell you where to go. God will tell you when to go, how to go, and how long to stay. So David escaped uh, through, and he, he, he decided to take the blame for the death of these people. And all that he can do is run for his life and to go into hiding. King Saul is rentless in his pursuit of David. And there are two different times in the pursuit when circumstances would seem to indicate that God had chosen to give David the victory of King Saul. One of the instances happened when David and his men were hiding in a cave. King Saul, unaware that he was there, he was so close to his enemy, decided to unknowingly spend the night in the same cave that David and his men was in. 
And see what I like, David friend said to him, can you believe it? This is the day that God was talking about when he talked, I will put your enemies in your hand. How many know God will make your enemy be at peace with you? God will make your enemy your footstool. In fact, that's where our enemy belongs. He belongs under our feet. You ought to put him under your feet. You can do whatever you want with him. But David uh, uh, snuck up to the king Saul, but he couldn't kill him. Instead, he cut off a corner of the king's royal robe. And the moment that David cut off the robe, he felt guilty. He said, God forbid that I should have done this to my master. God's anointed that I should so much raise a finger against him. Amen. He's God's anointed. You better be careful messing with God's anointed. You better be careful messing with God's appointed. Can I get a witness here? I don't care if you don't like them or not. I don't care if you don't care for what they doing. They still God's anointed. They still God's appointed. And if you're not careful when you raise your hand at God's anointed, it might be the last time you raise your hand. When you put your lips on God's anointed, it might be the last word you speak. Tell somebody don't mess with God's anointed. Don't mess with God's anointed. Don't mess with God's appointed leave God's anointed alone can I get a witness here always tell people if you so anointed and you think you anointed more than I am then you ought to pray till I get anointed like you you ought to pray till my anointed grows can I get a witness here don't put your lips on them pray for them pray with them can I get a witness here help them help them help them look at somebody say they need your help and not only did David restrain himself from harming the king he also restrained his men. David had a standard of excellence about himself. He understood that God does not ask us to do evil to accomplish his purpose. The Christian journey is not always smooth sailing. There will be trials. Come on, tell somebody trials. There will be tribulation. Say tribulation. There will be moments of doubt and despair. But like David, we are called to remain faithful as God trusting in his promises and his plan and his purpose for our life. My third and final point is God has a higher calling on your life. Come on, tell somebody God has a higher calling on your life. Anybody know that God has a higher calling on your life? Don't make me have to cut the lights on. Wake up back there. Can I get a witness here? Come on, tell somebody God has a higher calling on your life. I told you my night vision to kick in. You ain't meditating. You sleep because your neck keep weaving and bobbing. Come on, somebody. Come on, don't act like you all that and you ain't praying. Can I get a witness here? Come on, pray for the preacher. Pray with the preacher. Come on, help the preacher. Push the preacher. Y'all ready for this? Come on, somebody say God has a higher calling on your life. See, David relied on the precepts of God more than on his uh, senses and feelings. Uh, how many of you know you can't count on your feelings? Amen. Your feelings will, will, will trick you. Because the truth of the matter, sometimes you don't feel saved. Can I get a witness up here? I know you don't want the person next to you know that you know you're so deep and your relationship is so close. But sometimes I don't feel like I'm saved, Apostle. And sometimes I don't feel like acting saved. Because sometimes the way y'all be looking, I be wanting to slap the taste out your mouth. Can I get a witness here? I want to do some dental work and remove your teeth. Can I get a witness here? But thank God that I'm anointed and he won't let me do it. Do I got anybody that felt like that? You ever felt like slapping? You know, you, you, you know, your mama's talking about, yes, you, you know, you know, rolling up on you. Like you, 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 you better stop rolling up on me. I got PTSD, they say. Now, I'm not claiming it. I'm getting paid for it. Thank the Lord. Yeah, I've been healed by the blood of a lamb. Can I get a witness here? But that day you roll up on me, my PTSD might just act up. I might think you was from Iran or Iraq or somewhere. And I might tell the police, I just saw three Iranians. And then ask God to forgive me. And ask the apostle to pray for me and lay hands on me. Till I get delivered, till I come to my senses. Tell somebody I feel the presence of the Holy Ghost in this place. Come on, clap your hands and give him some praise. 
Yeah, he could have killed the king and brought the prophecy on his life to fulfill me. Amen. How I many you know you God don't need help in fulfilling the prophecy? If God said it, you believe it, it's already settled. It's going to be manifested when God get ready for it to be manifest. He don't need your help. David could have killed Saul and had his prophecy fulfilled right then and there. But that would have been sin. And so David honored the king because God asked us to honor authority. And let me pause before I kick it in the high gear. Uh huh. I see you back there. See, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Amen. God wants you to honor authority. God wants you to honor authority. You should honor your pastors. You should honor those in, that's been placed over you. I don't know why they're having an appreciation for them. They've been putting up with you all year. That's enough reason for it right there. My hair was black before I took over the church. Now I got salt and pepper, but you just can't tell because I keep it close cut. But if I let it grow, it'll be white. And I didn't have not one white hair before I started pastoring. It was y'all that gave me this white hair. Because while you home sleeping, I'm up praying. Can I get a witness here? While you rolling over, we up studying, trying to get a word for you, trying to get a word for your family, trying to get a word for your marriage, trying to get a word for your children, trying to get you saved, trying to get you delivered, trying to get you set free, trying to get a breakthrough for you. We're calling on the name of Jesus on your behalf. Shout yeah! You know, you know, it's a special occasion. Listen, I, I would love to be on the golf course on Sunday morning. I know, I know some of you don't want nobody to admit that, but there is some Sunday mornings if I had a, had a choice, I might would go to the golf course and hit a long and straight. But because I love God and I love God's people, I show up, I show up and complete my assignment and I go golfing on Monday. Can I get a witness here? Somebody ought to say yes, Lord. In fact, I love God so much, I went golfing on Friday before church. Not doing church, but before church. Went home and, amen, my wife said, you want something to eat? While she was cooking, I was showering, amen. I showered, came down and ate, and then came to church and gave God some glory. And I believe he knew I was going to come and give him some glory because he had me hitting them long and straight. He had me hitting the green like I supposed to hit the green. Somebody ought to say, yes, Lord. Look at somebody and say, you better do the will of God first and then God will bless you see the next morning when the king when the king and his army had left the cave and were some uh, ways away David shouted out to the king he said my master my king and David fell down and bowed in respect to the king and the bible said that king Saul turned around to see his enemy paying him respect and David called out to him and said how can you believe the people who say that I am out to kill Kill you my men wanted to kill you but I wouldn't let them in fact David said I'm no rebel that's why you got to know them to labor among you that's why I like having relationship with my co-pastors and co laborers in the gospel so when I hear something that don't sound right I say uh-uh I know them you did no no you must be the problem if they said something to you eh, eh, well what did you do to cause them to say that to you because I don't have that problem with them can I get a witness here and the way I roll if you're going to talk about somebody, I say, hold it on right there. This is what we're going to do. We're going to get them on the phone. And then I'm going to say, can you repeat what you just said? Because if you're man enough or woman enough to say it behind their back, you ought to be man or woman enough to say it why they can hear you. Can I get a witness up in here? 
Oh, yes, 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 yes. And then if you really want to find out if somebody's spiritual, say, let's pray. And see, you know, they, 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 they say, well, listen, I'm gone. You wasn't spiritual anyway. You was waiting for somebody to gossip with. You was waiting for somebody to talk story with. I ain't got time to get caught up in your mess. Can I get a witness here? Because one thing I do know, you're going to leave one day, but we still going to be here. Can I get a witness here? You can't come between me and the apostles. You can't come in between me and the bishops. You ain't going to trick me into that. You ain't going to change my mind. I know they love me, and they know I love them. And even when I don't see them, I'm still praying for them. I got some of them that I call their name every morning. I'm calling the roll. Can I get a witness here? You might not have heard from me this week, but God heard from me. I called your name this week. I called your name this week. I called your name this week. I called your name every morning, because I know the hell you caught. I know the hell you catching. I know who gave you the hell. Can I give you the witness up in here? Do I got anybody that know I'm preaching right? Come on and shout, he preaching. And King Saul calls back to David. He said, you are in the right and I am in the wrong. You heap good on me and I have dumped evil on you. God bless you, David. I know now beyond a doubt that you will rule as king. And then, then the text says, and Saul goes back home, and David and his men go back to hiding. And although King Saul had realized that he was wrong, he was not ready to hand his kingdom over. He again turned against David, and instead of having the one of the greatest military minds and commanders, David and his army fighting against his enemies, Saul devoted all his resources to finding and killing David. In other words, it was a fight of his life from finding out who God had made him to be to fulfilling the high call that was on his life can I get a witness here and each person on planet earth must fight that battle as well it is the fight of your life it is the fight for your purpose it is the fight for the knowledge of fulfillment so look at somebody said I'm fighting for my life I got any fighters in the house and the importance of perseverance despite many obstacles David faced David never gave up he continued to trust God even when circumstances seem hopeless he continued to serve God even when he would have been easier to turn away and in the end his faith and perseverance was rewarded he became one of the greatest kings an Israel in Israel history. In fact, he was known as a man after God's own heart. I want you to know the importance of integrity. Even when he was faced with the opportunity to kill Saul and take the throne, he chose to do what was right. He chose to honor God rather than to take matters in his own hands. Y'all gonna help me preach this thing. The integrity, this commitment to doing what is right even when it is difficult is a key aspect of finishing strong. How many of you know we need to finish what we started? How many of you know we need a strong finish? In our own lives, we too will face trials and tribulations. Huh? We too will be faced with moments of doubt and despair. Huh? But like David, we are called to remain faithful, to persevere, and to maintain our integrity. Huh? And if we do, we too can finish strong, huh? knowing that we have run the race with perseverance, huh? that we have fought the good fight of faith. Huh? See, you may have to scratch. Huh? You may have to crawl. Huh? You might have to do all of this to survive. Huh? You might have to do all that to thrive. Huh? You might have to fight for your purpose. Huh? You're in a fight for your life. Huh? But I stopped by to tell you huh, that we are more huh, than conquerors. Huh? I'm not just a conqueror, huh, but I'm more huh, I'm more, I'm more than a conqueror through Christ, through Christ.
Christ our Lord. Come on and clap your hands and say yes, Lord. For the Bible says in Isaiah 54 and 17, it said, no weapon that is formed against thee. It shall not, it will not, it can't prosper. Somebody ought to say yes, Lord. But it won't prosper. You can talk about me, but it won't prosper. You can try to discourage me, but it won't prosper. I refuse to quit. I refuse to throw in the towel. I refuse to surrender. I got my mind made up. I got my eyes fixed. I'm looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. Come on and say yes. Do I got any fighters in the house? Say yeah. The Bible says the thief come to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came that we could have the abundant life, the life of purpose. Come on and say yeah. Reconnecting and fighting for your purpose. My Bible says heaven and earth shall pass away but the word of God shall stand forever. So I'm standing on the promises. I'm standing on the word of God. I'm standing because if God said it and you believe it it's already settled. I'm getting ready to close here for the Bible said the grass may wither the flower may fade it but the word of God will stand forever come on tell somebody I'm standing I'm standing I'm standing I'm just like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water and I shall not I will not I won't be renewed come on and say yeah and the reason I won't be removed because I'm connected to the divine yeah do I got anybody that's connected to the divine say yeah come on tell somebody I'm reconnected and not only am I reconnected but I am connected and not only am I connected but I'm going to stay connected come hell or high water I'm going to stay connected I'm hooking up I'm tied up I'm wrapped up with Jesus come on and say yeah say yeah yeah How many of y'all know Jesus is the undisputed, undefeated, heavyweight champion of the world? And since I'm connected to him, I'm undefeated, I'm unbeatable, I'm undisputable, I'm the heavyweight champion of the world. Say yeah! connected to God's word. Mahalo for tuning in with Pacific Revival Center. If this message touched your spirit, make sure to subscribe and follow us on all our social media accounts to connect with our online family.
If you're already a follower, share our content with your family and friends. And if you'd like to support the ministry, click Give Now below. Our mission is to train, equip, and send out armies of believers to minister the gospel to all nations. And together, we can send the love of Christ to all corners of the world. We'll see you next week here at PRC, the place to be.